so here we have two rattlesnakes that hopefully will sort of sit next to each other for a second. Uh, this one here, this snake, is a western diamondback rattlesnake. This is Crotalus atrox. And the other snake, this one here, is a Mojave rattlesnake, Crotalus scutulatus scutulatus. And a lot of times people confuse these two snakes actually if they see them in the field or uh, on the road at night sometimes uh, people can have a little bit of a hard time telling them apart and they are somewhat similar uh, in appearance but I just thought it might be fun to kind of look at a, the differences a little bit and a lot of people think their pattern is very similar and while the pattern does have sort of a similar shape I actually think there are a lot of differences if you kind of uh, look closely so one thing that I usually feel like it's pretty obvious with Western Diamondbacks is they tend to have this darker ring around the blotches. So you can see on him, he's got this kind of central area, then there's a darker ring, <laughs> and then it's lighter around that. So there's kind of like three tones for each blotch. Whereas the Mojave tends to just have a darker blotch and there is a tiny bit of a ring around it which sometimes is a little bit more pronounced but in general there's a lot less variation in the colors of the blotches. The other thing that I find noticeable about Mojave's is that they seem to have a lot less um, like pixelation or maybe another way to say it is a lot less speckling. So Western Diamondbacks uh, many times tend to have these kind of mixed in darker spots or sometimes lighter spots. Whereas Mojave's, again, there's just this less variation in the color of the pattern. Now these are just two individuals and the snakes of course are variable. Not every individual looks the same. Um, but that's something for me where if I see them on the road, that's something pretty obvious that I tend to pick up on uh, myself. Another thing that usually is true, but not always, is the banding on the tail is different. So Western Diamondbacks tend to have these really large dark bands that are the same width as the light colored bands. Whereas Mojave rattlesnakes tend to have darker bands that are much more thin than the white bands, as you can see there. So the darker bands, the black bands are very thin in comparison to the white bands. Um, and again, that's variable too. Like I've got a Western Diamondback that just has like a black tail with a white stripe on it. So there are, is variation, but that's something that in general tends to be true. Now you can cut it off. Okay, so I've put two different snakes in here now. Um, and these two I think are a lot more close in appearance than the last two, but in general, if you apply those little rules that I talked about, or those little bits of things you can look for, you can see they still exist in these things. So if we look at the Mojave, which is this one over here, this one does have a little bit more variation in color in the blotches than the last Mojave did. This one is a darker individual, and it has a little bit more lighter color around the blotches than the last one did, I think. However, if you look at the overall pattern, it's still a lot more clean and less speckled looking than the Western Diamondback that we have here. So you can see this one within the dark blotches and also on the outer part of the, the pattern, like the part on the side of the snake, it still has more variation in the scales and the color in the scales than the Mojave does. I don't know if I'm using the best terminology to kind of explain what I'm looking at there. But to me, when I look at the, the Western Diamondback, it, it has a more speckled appearance, especially towards the rear of its body, than the Mojave does. This one looks like, this one looks like it's um, painted with one tone in many spots, as opposed to this one, which looks like someone was kind of flicking a paintbrush at it. On the Aatrox, again, you can see the black and the white bands are roughly equal. This Mojave has a little bit wider black bands than the last one did, but they are still more narrow than the white part of the tail. Now, I think a lot of people are aware that Mojave rattlesnakes can have a neurotoxic venom, 
and um, that is true in some parts of their range. Mojaves are actually highly variable in their venom, and in some areas they can have almost a only neurotoxic venom, in some areas they can have almost no neurotoxin, and then there's some parts of their geographic range where they have both uh, neurotoxic and non-neurotoxic components in their venom. So um, they are <laughs> they are a lot more variable. Atrox, uh, probably because they have a more uh, consistent um, population throughout their range with less breaks, uh, they tend to have a more homogeneous venom throughout their range, which is just more hematoxic um, and tend to not have really much neurotoxin in their venom. All right, so we're gonna put a couple of these in a tube so we can look a little bit more closely at some of the differences in the head color and scalation. You know, I also wanna point out that I've now put two different snakes together twice and they're not trying to hurt each other. <laughs> they don't have any interest in trying to injure another snake. So um, this is the Mojave in the tube, and if you look at the white or lighter colored band, the one further back from the eye, you can see it goes past the corner of the mouth. So the, the end of the mouth is like right here, and then the white stripe continues to back there. Whereas on an Atrox, it goes down higher up. And then also, you know, Cat might let his head come out and then hold him a little bit further away. Can you see the scales on the head? Yeah. So the Mojave rattlesnake's uh, scientific name, Scutulatus, comes from the large scales on the top of the head. And this is an unusual thing in rattlesnakes. Most rattlesnakes have just a bunch of really little small scales on top of the head, and we'll look at the Western Diamondback in a minute. But the Mojave has these larger plates on top of the head, and that's what they're named after. But looking really closely at the top of their head or even the eye stripe is not the best idea if you're not sure what kind of snake it is or you don't have it restrained in some safe way like this. All right, so now we have a Western Diamondback in the tube. And if you look at the eye stripes on this one, you can see that the eye stripe behind the eye comes down and meets basically the corner of the mouth. They're both right here at the tip of my finger. So remember the Mojave came further back, it would have been back here, and then the Diamondback comes down right to the, the end of the mouth. And then I'll do the same thing and let this one's head come out a little bit, but we'll be a little further away from Cat. Nice. Hopefully, if I can get him to crawl out here. There we go. <laughs> and if you look at the top of this one's head, you can see it's lacking those large scales on the top of the head and in between the eyes. So this is more typical of rattlesnakes. They only have um, these kind of small scales on the top of the head. Go back to the home here. Okay. 